All right. Welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, today's topic is about time-restricted eating, which is a form of intermittent fasting. You know, for a while, time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting in general was all the rage. It was thought as the magic bullet that's going to cure everything and regrow your hair and all sorts of craziness. And then there were studies that came out and said, you know, intermittent fasting doesn't really work. There wasn't any difference between control groups who did lower calories versus fasting going on. But in science, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. Intermittent fasting, specifically time-restricted eating, can actually be a great tool in your tool belt once you combine it with other things. What are those other things? Making sure you're focusing on sleep, making sure you're exercising, making sure you're working on your stress, and making sure you're eating mostly plants. And when you do that and you add on time-restricted eating, you can actually get amazing results. In fact, we do this in my clinical practice where I run an obesity clinic and I see patients by the thousands and we've had tremendous results through this. So let's look at the latest data to see what we can kind of learn from this going on. So there's a new study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism in which the researchers did a review and meta-analysis of randomized control studies. And they were wanting to make sure that these studies lasted a minimum of four weeks. Why four weeks? Because they want to make sure that there's enough time to actually see a change going on. So all in all, the researchers identified 17 studies and they had 899 participants. And in those 17 studies, the majority of the pattern of time-restricted eating was really the 8 and 16, which is 8 hours of eating, 16 hours of fasting. Okay, so let's get into the results. What the f researchers found was that the folks that were in the time-restricted eating arm compared to controls, they actually had 1.6 kilograms greater weight loss. They had 1.48 kilograms greater fat mass loss going on. Their fasting glucose was lower by 4.08 milligrams per deciliter. Their total cholesterol was lower by 6.1 milligrams per deciliter. So what does all this stuff mean? They lost weight, their sugars were better, and their cholesterol was better compared to the controls going on. Then the researchers specifically looked at 12 studies that were only looking at the 8 and 16 hours, not 6 not 10, nothing else going on, but 8 and 16. And in the 8 and 16, the folks doing the fasting arm, they had 1.23 kilograms greater weight loss than compared to controls. But what was interesting in this group was that their starting weight was normal. In other words, they weren't overweight or obese to begin with. Then in overweight individuals who did fasting, there was 1.36 kilograms greater weight loss. But one caveat to note is that when they looked at patients that were classified as being obese, that means a BMI over 30 going on, there wasn't any difference in body weight or fat mass going on compared to controls. So as we look at this data and we try to compare it to all of the other data, the question becomes, what's the take home? Well, the first take home is that fasting is a great tool. If you can build habits and follow the 8 and 16, it is definitely something that you can sustain for the rest of your life. It doesn't interfere too much with your life going on. And if you go and, you know, mess up here and there, you can easily jump back on it. Number two, if you think fasting is going to be a secret weapon and you can eat whatever the heck you want and not have to change anything, then the answer is not going to work. And then the third point is, is some of the most elegant data that makes this stuff very interesting is... If you want to supercharge fasting, do it with your circadian rhythm. In other words, make your eight hours during daylight time. Now, of course, people work night shifts and stuff like that. It's almost impossible to do, and I get that. But for those who are able to, you want to make it so that it aligns with more daytime. So, for example, your eight hours could be from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock, 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock, 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock. But it would be better to do it that way than to do it, for example, from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. That may not be as optimal. And when studies have done it during the daylight hours, they've actually shown better results than when they've done it in more of the evening hours going on. But as always, look at fasting as a tool. And if you have other questions, other topics you guys are interested in, as always, drop those in the comments below. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.